The number of job opportunities in the United States decreased slightly in January, but is still far more than the number of workers that are available. The JOLTS report from the Labor Department showed that there were 10824 million job vacancies, down around 410,000 from December. Today, we will talk about U.S. job openings fall slightly in January, JOLTS survey. This div happened in the midst of a competitive job market where companies are actively looking for competent applicants to fill a range of roles. Let's first review the contents of the job openings and labor turnover survey, JOLTS, before going any further. This application offers vital information about worker turnover and demand. The quantity of open positions that firms are actively seeking candidates for is indicated by job vacancies. They function as an essential gauge of the state of the labor market. Asterisk setting the numbers in context. Let's look at the historical background to help put the January numbers in context. There are currently a significant number of employment vacancies notwithstanding the reduction. It is imperative to acknowledge that this reduction transpired against wider economic conditions, such as disturbances in the supply chain, scarcity of labor and evolving workforce inclinations. Dynamics of the labor market The state of the labor market today is a result of various variables. Asterisk mismatch between supply and demand There is still a shortage of workers relative to employment openings. Long-term job openings are a result of employers' difficulties in finding qualified applicants for their opportunities. Asterisk mismatch in skills when job searchers' skills do not match the requirements of open positions, certain industries encounter difficulties. To close this gap, upskilling and reskilling initiatives are essential. Asterisk Sector Variability Different sectors have different job openings. While some industries experience robust demand, egg technology, healthcare, others continue to recover more slowly, egg hospitality, retail. Asterisk Labor Force Participation The pandemic has influenced labor force participation rates. Some individuals remain hesitant to re-enter the workforce due to health concerns, caregiving responsibilities, or other factors. Implications for policy The JOLTS data informs policymakers, economists, and businesses. Here are some implications. Asterisk, the monetary strategy. The Federal Reserve closely monitors job openings as part of its decision-making process. A sustained decline could impact interest rate decisions. Asterisk, workforce development. Addressing skills gaps through training programs and education is critical. Encouraging workforce mobility and adaptability is essential. Asterisk sector-specific strategies. Tailored approaches are necessary for different sectors. For example, supporting tourism and hospitality may require targeted initiatives. The job market is steadily returning to its pre-pandemic self. Although the slowdown in job growth paused in the second half of 2023, we expect it to renew as 2024 unfolds. After a temporary uptick over 2024-25, we expect unemployment in 2028 to reach 3.5%, right where it was before the pandemic. We forecast that labor force participation will recover ahead of pre-pandemic rates as widespread job availability pulls informally discourage workers. During the three months that concluded in January 2024, the growth of employment on non-farm payrolls was 2.2% on an annualized basis, with around 353,000 positions being added in December. This represents a substantial acceleration from the 1.6% growth rate that was seen in the preceding three months, and it is somewhat higher than the 1.7% annual growth rate that was seen from 2015 to 2019. Are you still there? Then hit the subscribe button and give a thumbs up to this video. Let's continue. It is possible that the downward trend in employment that has been going on since the beginning of 2022 has momentarily slowed down. It should not come as a surprise that the trend that began in the middle of 2021 has temporarily halted, considering the robust increase of gross domestic product in the most recent quarters. As a result of the slowdown in GDP growth, however, we anticipate that the downturn will return in the first half of 2024. On the other hand, businesses will eventually look for ways to reduce their labor utilization, often known as billable staff hours. In the first half of 2023, businesses have already begun to reduce the number of hours that each employee is required to work, which has decreased by more than 0.6% compared to the previous year. We anticipate that the reduction in hours will serve as a forerunner to a slower pace during which total job increases will occur. Over the course of the previous year, there has been a decrease in the number of people employed in temporary help, which is an indicator that frequently serves as a precursor to more widespread job cuts. Even while it is still around 0.6% lower than it was before the pandemic, the percentage of the adult population that is employed is getting closer and closer to 60.5%. As of the three months that concluded in January 2024, the unemployment rate averaged 3.7%,
which is a significant improvement from the levels of approximately 3.5% that existed before to the epidemic. As a result, the residual gap in employment rates is virtually completely attributable to a decrease in the number of people participating in the labor force. All individuals who are either now employed or officially jobless, meaning they are actively looking for work, are considered to be part of the labor force. When individuals no longer fit into either of these two categories, they are counted as not being part of the labor force. People aged 55 and older who ended up retiring early during the pandemic appear to be the primary cause of the persistent shortage in labor force participation. These individuals are unlikely to return to the employment because they are not likely to return to the workforce. As opposed to this, the participation rate among people aged 25 to 54 has actually slightly surpassed the levels that existed prior to the pandemic. Over the next few years, we anticipate that the labor force participation rate of older Americans will gradually improve nonetheless, the impact of excessive retirements will continue to be a drag on the labor force participation rate. Despite the fact that it is slowing down, hiring in the healthcare and leisure industries continues to account for a significant portion of overall job growth. People resumed some doctor's appointments and sorts of entertainment that they may have avoided during the pandemic, which led to an increase in employment in these industries at the beginning of the year 2023. The employment situation, on the other hand, is currently at a level that is comparable to what it was before the epidemic. This is because the employment levels in the healthcare industry have now surpassed the levels that existed before the pandemic. As compared to the previous three months, which saw an annualized growth rate of 3.7%, the employment rate in the healthcare industry dropped to 3.3% in the three months that ended in January 2024. The increase of jobs in the government sector continued to dominate job gains across all sectors in January, despite the fact that it slowed down. In a manner comparable to healthcare and leisure, the process of catching up with losses incurred during the epidemic era is now largely finished, which means that future improvements should be gradual. We continue to maintain that the increase in employment that we observed, which began in the second half of 2023, will be temporary, despite the fact that the construction and real estate industries continue to increase at a rate of approximately 3%. It seems as though the factory building boom and a modest rebound in housing were the primary drivers of that boom. During the course of the following year, we estimate that the housing downturn will return, which will result in a decrease in construction jobs. The growth of private hourly wages has averaged 5.4% on an annualized basis over the course of the past three months. Over the course of the preceding three months, this represents an increase from 3.1%. Despite the fact that the year-over-year -year growth rate had increased marginally to 4.5% as of January, it was still significantly lower than the peak of 5.9% that it reached in March of 2022. This is slightly more than the 3.5% that is consistent with the Federal Reserve's target inflation rate of 2%. This is it for today. If you liked our content, let us know and do subscribe to show your support. Goodbye.